Hannah's Christmas by Melissa Peterson, illustrated by Melissa E.Y. In November, when reindeer came to look for food in the woods behind her grandmother's farm, Hannah's father got a new job. Hannah and her family had to say goodbye to Mormor and the farm and all the rest of Sweden. They were going to make a new home in America. What Hannah's mother and father liked best about America was how friendly the neighbors were. What Hannah's baby brother Sven liked best about America were the boxes. What Hannah liked best about America was nothing. She missed Sweden. She missed the farm. Most of all, she missed Mormor. In early December, a crate arrived from Sweden. It's from Mormor, cried Hannah. Inside, nestled in a bed of straw, were all sorts of goodies. A box of chocolates, some jars of Mormor's homemade jam, a stack of Christmas presents wrapped in starry paper, and a long, lacy white dress with a silky red sash for Hannah to wear on Santa Lucia Day. Hannah couldn't wait. In Sweden, on Santa Lucia Day, the oldest girl in the family puts on a special white dress and a beautiful crown made of fir branches and candles. Then she serves a breakfast of Lucia buns to her family. Mama, when will it be Santa Lucia Day? Hannah asked. Soon, Mama replied. But, sweetheart... I won't have time to make you a crown or bake Lucia buns this year. I'm afraid I won't even have time to get the house ready for Christmas. Hannah was so disappointed she nearly cried. Now she had one more thing to miss about Sweden. Mama took the treats to the kitchen, and Hannah put down the dress with a sigh. She closed her eyes, leaned over the side of the crate, and breathed in the sweet, grassy scent of the straw. It smelled like the farm. It smelled like home. She leaned over even farther. Hey, watch what you're doing, cried a grumpy voice. Hannah was so surprised she almost fell into the crate. Scowling up at her from the straw was a tiny little man. His woolen cap was as red as a holly berry, and his bushy white beard reached all the way to the tips of his tiny black boots. A Tomton! Hannah cried in wonder. Hannah knew all about Tomptons from her grandmother's stories. They were magical creatures who lived on farms and helped with the chores. If a Tompton is happy, he'll bring you good luck, Mormor had told her. If he's unhappy, watch out. He'll cause no end of mischief. This Tompton did not look happy at all. You nearly squash me flat, the little man said crossly. As if I hadn't been through enough already. Imagine, there I was, having a nice snooze in the barn, when suddenly I get scooped up, straw and all, and dumped into this blasted crate. He climbed nimbly over the side. Where in thunder am I? He demanded, marching over to a window. One look outside, and he began to shriek. Where is the barn? Where are my friends, the goats and the geese? Where are the reindeer and the woods and the snow-covered hills? They're in Sweden, Hannah said sadly. You're in America now. Impossible, shouted the Tompton. He grabbed Mama's favorite vase from the coffee table and smashed it on the floor. Mama came in a hurry. What happened, she cried. Oh, Hannah, not my blue vase. Hannah tried to explain about the Tompton, but he had disappeared behind a chair. Mama didn't believe her and scolded her for telling tales. That was just the beginning of Hannah's bad luck. Over the next few days, things went wrong all through the house. Papa's socks disappeared from his dresser drawer. The oven was turned up too high so that Mama's pork roast burnt to a crisp. The dining room chairs were wrapped in paper towels like mummies. Hannah often caught the Tompton at his mischief, but he always hid when a grown-up came into the room, so she got blamed for everything. We understand that you're homesick, said Mama and Papa, but enough is enough. You're right, enough is enough, thought Hannah, and she went looking for the Tompton. 
She found the Tompton in the kitchen, pouring salt into the sugar bowl. I understand that you're homesick, she told him, but enough is enough. You haven't even tried to like it here. What's to like, grumbled the Tompton. No animals to talk to. No wood to chop or paths to sweep. No wind in the fir trees to sing me to sleep at night. Hannah thought for a moment. I could make you a bed near my window, she suggested, and I could sing you to sleep. Hm, said the Tompton. But he stopped pouring. And there's plenty of sweeping to do right here, Hannah pointed out. Humph, the Tompton said again, and he put down the salt. Hannah got a big wicker laundry basket and took it to her room. The Tompton followed her, watching closely as she set it by the window and put in a blanket for padding. Now we need a sheet, Hannah said. The Tompton grabbed something white and lacy, lacy from her chair. What's this? he said gruffly. I suppose it's too good for an old fellow like me. That's my Santa Lucia dress, said Hannah with a sigh. You may as well use it for a sheet. I won't be wearing it this year. What? shouted the Tompton. Why in thunder not? Isn't tomorrow Santa Lucia day? Have you forgotten about Sweden already? Of course not, Hannah shot back. But I don't have a crown, and Mama's too busy to make Lucia buns. The Tompton snorted. Bosh and balderdash, is that all? We can make you a crown. And I happen to think more more's jam on toast is as tasty as Lucia buns any day. The Tompton's voice was as gruff as usual, but Hannah saw a kindly gleam in his eyes. Okay, she said shyly. I'll get some paper and scissors and glue. That's more like it, said the Tompton. At dawn the next day, Hannah put on her Santa Lucia dress and sash, and the Tompton placed the crown on her head. Silently, they tiptoed to the kitchen to make breakfast for the family. The Tompton insisted on eating several spoonfuls of jam, just to make sure it's more more's usual recipe. But there was still plenty left for the toast. When everything was ready, Hannah carried the tray upstairs to her parents' room. Happy Santa Lucia Day, she sang out. Her parents opened their eyes in surprise. Why, Hannah! said her father. How did you ever manage all this? Oh, I had a little luck on my side, Hannah said with a grin. The whole family enjoyed the feast. After the last crumb of toast had been devoured, Mama threw back her bed covers. Come, Hannah, she said. Let's see if your luck helps us find the box of Christmas decorations. The rest of the unpacking will just have to wait. That was the beginning of a busy, busy day. By evening, the house smelled like the woods behind Mormore's farm. Evergreen boughs graced all the doorways. The decorations were up, and Hannah and Mama had even baked a batch of cookies. This is just like Christmas at home, Papa said, admiring the tree. This is home, Hannah said with a smile. Hidden behind the fragrant tree, the Tomton smiled too.